video you at home watching we've got a lot to talk about the build-up everything that you need to know the statistics facts everything Ashanti Gold versus Kerala United and as yesterday we discussed it looks like it's an open plain field because of COVID-19 every team feels they have a chance because of what has happened and as we saw yesterday there was very little to choose between um, the two sides Legon City's and a break home Chelsea. We'll take a look at that match in just um, uh, a second. But, but very, very briefly, in terms of the CAF um, ruling or guidelines for fans not going to the stadium, let's get this right. Do we have to follow the CAF guideline or is country by country depending on your situation? Well, I believe that um, the government and the FE are in talks because I'm, I'm aware the FA is not happy about the directive that came from the ministry because they believe that this directive does not come from CAF specifically to say that supporters shouldn't go to the stadium. First and foremost, the government has already said that 25% of supporters should go to the stadium, but they should follow the protocols. Without nose masks, you cannot enter the stadium. Without washing your hands or sanitizing your hands, you cannot go into the stadium. There should be some kind of um, social distancing. And I believe that the clubs have adhered to that and they were doing it. At the end of the day, the blaster against Sudan game was the one that CAF said no supporters should enter the stadium. And I, as I heard the general secretary spoke on one of the stations in Accra, he said that, look, they've written to CAF trying to tell them that, look, government of Ghana has given them 25% mm. of supporters to go to the stadium. And, and then I'm told that CAF is looking into it. Probably we've not started to see whether the 25% will work or not. Mm. So probably the next blast at home game is going to be the one that the 25% will mm. go. My problem was that, yeah, I think I said it yesterday, and I'll repeat it again. The politicians go for work, they go for running, they go for rallies and all that. I've never heard any of them talking about people should go back, social distancing, put on your nose marks, and et cetera, et cetera. But when it comes to football, yes, we've given the protocols to follow. And you are doing exactly that. So why supporters not to go to the stadium? Hmm, good question. And in uh, moving it out from that context to the reality on the ground, how does that affect the players? And who better to ask than a former player? He's played at the highest level at club, at international level, black stars, you name it. Coach, let me ask you, um, how difficult is it for players to perform when it's literally no fans, literally an empty stadia? How the, what does it do to your psyche and your mentality? Well, thank you very much. Um, I need to say to you that football, in as much as it's a game, but it's more entertaining. And normally, players draw inspirations from their fans. You play football because you want the results, you want to win, or for the obvious reasons. But most of the time, you play the game for yourself and the fans. So when the fans are not there, the number 12 shirt, obviously, is missing. The ooing and the eyeing, the enthusiasm is completely missing. So players, you know, uh, are not too much enthused when they play in empty stadia. Uh, that notwithstanding, you know, um, we normally have this kind of fan base who have certain connections with their players and you can always hear, or with their teams, you can hear those accolades sounded uh, in the stands. And the players take, take it very seriously. Mm. You know, and these are the motivation, most motivational things. The small, small, little, little, little things mm. that will drive a player to perform optimally. And they play for the badge and the club. It's very important. You know, and, the, and the fans. And the fans, yeah. especially the fans. So what's that, the fans. this argument that um, health and wellness, safety and well-being of the players comes first. Yep. Is this an argument that we can even challenge? We can't. Can we, can't we? we can't challenge this. Mm. And the fact of the matter is that you have life, you have health before you can perform. Mm. But that notwithstanding, you will realize that um, just before the beginning of uh, the league, it looked as if the COVID situation had gone a little bit on the low side with very little um, mm. infections. Right. But at a point in time, there was a spike. Mm. And I believe that is what informed the decision mm. that let us tread more cautiously. Okay. For which reason they decided to say no fans in the stadium at all. all right. But I think, by and large, 
going forward, there will be a broader consultation. I will see the way awesome. forward. Coach Abukari Damba, and yes, broader consultations. And we'll keep you posted as far as the COVID-19 issue is concerned. Every, may, every game will keep you, give you an update as to what's happening with the various centres and various clubs giving us their reports. The testing continues. Let's move on to the field of action itself. Yesterday kicked off the Ghana Premier League. Day one, um, match one action, which was supposed to be match two, obviously, because of the crowds of Vogue Edwana Stars cancellation. Let's take a look at the highlights from that game. And um, two penalties, quite interesting. So the first two goals recorded in match day one, game one, were from the penalty spot. And uh, gentlemen, uh, first of all, coach, take a look at this. Clear penalty, no doubt about it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yes, it is. Because he, instead of going for the ball, he went for the leg of Kofi Ogusu. And I think that the defender decision was very bad. And I think the referee was, was caught spot on. Not much Fatal Dauda could do about this, Coach Damba. No, not, nothing, not, nothing he could <laughs> do about it. Because he was actually trying to psychologically play into the mind of the penalty taker. And he did not buy to that story at all. And at the all, second penalty? The second penalty. Let's take a look at that again. It was a very, very clear penalty. You know, the player is gone ahead of you. You pulled the player and still tripped him from behind. You see the pull with the right hand, then the trip. Mm. So the player obviously had to go down. You know, in situations like this, you realize there was a cover. You had a teammate who was running in front of the opponent on the ball. Meanwhile, the ball had even left the opponent. So there could have been, you know, an intervention there. Two very back. nicely taken spot kicks, and both, as we agree, were genuine. Um, not a card. I mean, you know, social media after the game yesterday, a bit of um, blitz on the referee, but maybe perhaps uh, looking back, he would have thought uh, caution would have been harsh after he had given a, the penalty. What are the rules? Rules are rules, mm. and the rules are clear. I think it was an oversight. Mm. It was an oversight. There were quite a few referee. oversights yes. yesterday by the referee. Yes, it was. And I believe it also has to do with, we are just starting the mm. league. We'll have a lot of howlers here and there. We'll have lots of mistakes here and there. With about two, three, four games, things will stabilise. You know, now, just as it is affecting the teams, the main actors on the pitch, so it is affecting officials as well. Right. So, small, small, small mistakes are allowed, but not too many mistakes. All right. Not too many. All right. If you've just joined us, you're in good company. I've got Coach Eben uh, Sifa as well as Coach Abukari Damba. They need very little introduction if you are indeed a lover of Ghana football. And we're getting ready for a big match in Obuasi between Ashgold and Carolite United. And let's take a look at Obois. It's been a while since um, I trekked over there and I kind of miss that vibe. It has a different vibe, <laughs> totally. Obois is a different vibe. Let's take a look at what we have there. The crew, of course, Ellie Kondo. Happy birthday. It's Ellie's birthday today. Ellie, a baby face Ellie. I, I'm not sure if he's 21 or 31. But Eli, uh, Sicho, as well as Nana Dakwa leading our location crew in Obuasi. Let's take a look at this. Don't boy, come on 16, the man who was here a few days ago. Techno, making sure that that is your phone of choice. Coach, Obuasi, what memories does it bring? Well, let's take a look at, let's take a listen to these. All right, Coach, what memories do you have of Obuasi? Lots and lots of memories. Mm. And I, 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 I play my mind back to the days when I was still active. Playing for RTU and playing in a, the Hossi Park. It wasn't the Lenclay Stadium, but it was a Hossi Park. Right. And you realize that, yes, Obuasi is a real football city. Right. Until a lot of people used to describe it as a furnace. Why? Is it because of the heat? Or the, 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 the treatment? You a, know, the a combination of factors. The people are not that kind of die-hard Obuasi supporters. Right. That's right. They're from far and wide. From far and wide. So they all, there's a lot of diversity in there. Where the support base is not as safe, it must be Obuasi gold fields or Ashanti gold for that matter. Mm -hmm. But they, they allow, you know, for other supporters to add their views, to jubilate and to do all kinds of things. Yeah. So they are quite 
uh, you know, they accept each other and they accept visitors, but only that sometimes <laughs> They can be overly, overly, overly. You yeah, know, we know about that. We, we, we've had, you know, <laughs> especially with consequent hearts visiting. You know, we've had quite interesting incidents. We're not going to go into that. But does Oboise still possess that um, fortress, you know, uh, vibe, as it were? Does it have that fear anymore, Coach Ben, or no. is now just any other venue? When you're going, you don't have to be you know, petrified. I, I, I of don't what think to so. Expect. I mean, the days of golfers. Not Ashanti good yeah. golfers. Goldfield. That was the days you have the lives of um, the late Robertson. Right. You, you talk of Yahweh Champon, CK Akono, yeah. Tony Ahenfo, 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 Ahenfo right. Fidel Bla. Yeah. These are guys, Tough. Eben Hagan, yeah. anytime any team visited Obuasi, you know you are going to witness a very good football. But at the end of the day, you come up with an empty hand. It trickled down to Nana Hindia. They came all down. What was the name of that Black Stars defender? Very stocky. Is it a J? You know, one of Samuel the... Jays. Samuel Jays is now in the U.S. Right, right, right. He was right. a left back. Right. Yes, the left back. I mean, Had the a typical Star way of against running. The Germans, against the German national team. They did the Effenberg. Yeah, yeah, Effenberg. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas Rosinski. Yes. They, they, they had job players. Him. And yeah. Yeah, they had players. I yeah. mean, every season you could see Ice Gold get in good quality players. Afo Dodo and Cole. And all that. They were in the, all in the team. Um, but they've trickled down until just recent times that Ice Gold struggles a lot. But in terms of consistency, by keeping their players, they've done so well. Just last season, they lost about eight key players. Mm -hmm. You talk of Latif Anabila, you talk of James Akamekon, you talk of Mubarak Yusif, you, you talk of Eric Donko, you talk of Shafi Mumuni. These are guys that have been consistent with Ashanti Gold for the last two, three years in terms of their, in the African campaign and also in the league that they played. But they have other guys that are in the team that anytime they visit, any team visit Obuasi, in as much that the pitch is very good, you enjoy good football. Yeah. You know, Ghanaians always want to play on a very good turf. So any team that visits Obuasi plays very well. So they always give Ice Gold a tough time. That was the reason why last season, the NC competition, the Tier 1, Kyrilla went there in an injury time, a painful one-goal defeat to Ashanti Gold. And so it made this game very interesting, you know, a payback or plus two. We're watching a, um, a payback a or plus two. Uh, before, Ash Gold before the COVID. This, no, know. this is at Baba Yara Sports Stadium. Right. Yeah. Ashanti Gold and Kumasi Ashanti Kotoko. Yeah. And I, I think that this is also about for he's now with um, um, Adriana Stars. He's left uh, the I, short man. Yes, mm -hmm. that they call him Manoma. <laughs> he's now with um, um, Adriana Stars. So today's game is really going oh, to wow. be wonderful. Good, this good is skills, Apia eh? He's going to be the man in midfield for Ashanti goal today. A very good passer of the ball. Yeah. When it comes to set pieces, oh, yeah. one of the finest in Obuasi. So Karela going into this game is going to give us a lot of things to, to cheer about. That is why I have a ho have hope. And believe that today's game is going to be very much interesting and very competitive and very strong than what we witnessed yesterday. But we don't know much about Karela, even though they're not exactly babies. They are relatively new compared to some of the other clubs in the Ghana Premier League. But there's one thing about them. When they're focused, when they have their players fit, they are a handful. They, 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 after the demise of the owner of the club, may he so rest in peace. They lost 10 key players, including their coach. Five of them went to Kumasi Asante Kotoko. The club of Maswal Bako, Ishmael Ganiu, uh, William Opoku, their captain, and then Johnson Smith, the coach. He looked talk of Jan Vital, the Ivorian international who came to play for them. But yes, though, they managed to, to hold on to their outs until last season when um, Ghana guys decided to help them put up the Astro Turf at yeah. Nyinasi. So they decided to play their home games at uh, Akon Park in Takwa. So they normally trek to Takwa to play their games and go back to um, Eninase to train. Mm. So they were finding things difficult. So they were happy when the COVID came and then everything went off. Now they started again. Now they have a sponsorship from GMPC and Ghana Gas. So they have the lives of um, Diawusi Taylor, he's still in the team, Sadiq Alassan, formerly of Wa All Stars, Kumasi Asante Kotoko. And then of course, Omar, Omar Bashiru, Wafa, yeah. and then Kumasi Asante Kotoko. I mean, Darlington, Jam Fosu yeah. is also there. They have Samuel Ofori, formerly of Mediama, is in the team. And Bennett Ofori, they call him Siru. He used to play for Breku Masnas, Kumasi Asante Kotoko, through Mediama, and now he's with the team. You no, know, Godfrey is still around. And right. still, so Go they, they have a wonderful team. And, and I can assure you that with the, with the, with the person of Evans Adote, I mean, the, the head of the technical team. They'll be he, looking, he used to yeah. work for Ashanti Gold 
academy, yeah. and then he was a technical director of Mediema, right. and now he's in a helm of affairs. There's so one he, area we're not really talking about, the goalkeeping, and I've seen a couple of goalkeepers making some good interceptions and yeah. saves here, but coach, um, in terms of that area, do we have the quality of keepers spread across? And let's concentrate on Ashgold and uh, we Carella do. for the we moment. We do, Carella. And are, you, and are you happy that these keepers are the caliber of top professional football in any league? Absolutely. And the good thing is that we do have goalkeepers trainers now who, are, who man that department. So they are able to pay attention to the specifics and the details. Was it like that in the past or this in the is past, an area, it's more emphasis now being There's placed. more emphasis on, that, on the goalkeeping department, unlike our time when we did not have goalkeeping uh, uh, trainers and all that. But, but now that we stand in Karela, they might be doing without their goalkeeper, Hagan. Yeah, he's injured. You know, Hagan is, has an injury. But they do have, you know, this house of folk, uh, loaned goalkeeper. Uh, Richard, we do. Richard is But they are going to use uh, Yao and San Fufu. Fufu. Right. Use Fufu. second keeper from Idiama. Yeah, Fufu. He's now their number one. Yeah. We, we're, we're, we're taking a look at the yeah. statistics before uh, this view. They don't score too many goals. Uh, they win 2-1, two, 1-0. One, one, no. Maybe at, if they're good, 2-0, no, that is Ash Gold. So they're not a free scoring side by any means. And against Carella, it should be an open game. Maybe we'll see something different because it's an open game. Everybody is starting afresh. You know, and you know, yeah, even though it's an open game, the interesting thing about Carella is that they still have, you know, this young boy who scored about 14 goals in two, two years. And he's still a force to reckon with. And more, most of the time, I believe he's the key player. He's the most important player and the best player they have in the team now. He's fantastic up front. And bringing you, along Bashiru, you, you talk of yes, the, the the OCT, the yes. And now they have brought on Bashiru. So yeah. the partnership is you something know, that we should, Bashiru, we should work. Bashiru is there to take the place of Emmanuel Keke, Keke, Keke who yes. has moved to Kotoko. Mm -hmm. And Sadiq Alasa, with the kind of experience he's gained in the Ghana Premier League, mm. when he was playing for Kotoko, he was in the Kotoko U20 mm -hmm. before he was loaned to Abidas. Yeah. And then he went to Wild Stars to help Wild Stars win the league. Yeah. And then he came to play for Karela. Yeah. So the, in the years past, he's been wonderful in Milford. He's, yeah. he's the key man in today's game for Karela. And of course, they have a BYF striker, mm -hmm. um, Richard Beck, who is yeah. also in the team. Mm -hmm. Kwame Boatin, you know, for money of a crack great Olympics, yeah. he went to Kotoko, he yes. became his own man at Medium. That's right. He's also there for them. So for me, we are really going to witness a very good game. Although, Although it's, it's going, going to be, be the, the first, first game, game in the first, first week of the But, but do, do you remember this uh, defender? And that is what enthuses me. You know, and uh, Adote has been able to bring him to the fore. This uh, Avo, they call him Avo. Prosper Avo. Prosper. Formerly a lot of Lions. Yes, and, and his inclusion in the team will bring a lot of yeah, stability. Yeah, he, he will be competing with Kamal Dean yeah. at the right side of, of, of defense. For, for me, Karela is going to this game with some new players in, in, in depth there. Yeah. But Ashanti Gold definitely are going to have Atakusi. Formerly of Kotoko, yeah. they have Rula Namuzu, yeah. and then of course Bashiru, Bashiru yeah. um, um, of um, Dream FC, the yes. former the captain yes. of Dream FC, Osayajimai, Samad yeah. Ibrahim, and then Emperor Da Costa yeah. in defense. In Milford, uh, David Abagna, your Abagna own boy, is, David Abagna yeah, of Wild Stars, and of course Apia Makati in Milford. Yeah. They have Emos Ade still in the team, Emos and Chroma, Emmanuel Usu also in the team, and then they went in for Yawano from um, Bechem United. It looks yeah. like a lot of so, changes. So, How would this? A lot of changes. I mean, it's good if you're trying to build a side, yeah. but in terms of cohesion, we're not going to see free flowing football. Telepathic passing by these two. Yeah, when you, when you look Just at Just a minute, not, not, not to cut you there, but let's link to Oboise. I believe we have a, a link now. Let's catch up with the latest pre match um, action, whatever is happening there. Let's catch up with Oboise, what's happening there. New season and football is back. How happy are they and what are they looking forward to? I'm sure you're also waiting to see what they are expecting ahead of kickoff to today's game. Let's enter into Obwasi and find out what they are looking for and what you should also be waiting for in today's game. This is our own. Let's cherish our own. Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm very happy. I wasn't interested in the Ga the Ghana Premier League at first, but it seems I'm I'm gaining interest in it. Born on the start in the paper, me I'm 
because of corona and time Premiership, <laughs> Na premiership no ye bompa bibia ba ye kama na se de eko no mpo mpo eh season ye be komi atande kotoko season no ye ba ji asia na oh yeah i make me very very happy because since this uh, lockdown and this virus of 18 we will not been seeing the football so sometimes you no know, after work we need to relax ourselves and watch game and make ourselves feel comfortable and very happy so i'm very glad that the, the Ghana leg is back mm. oh i'm very very glad I, 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 it looks like a boy say Lenkley Sports Stadium is ready for today's game between Ashgold and Karela. But obviously, fans will not be allowed in here. There were speculations or there were earlier arrangements for 25% of fans to be in here. But it looks like today we're not having that. Uh, I'm here with the administrative manager of Ashanti Gold, Daniel Bio here. Now, Daniel, thank you very much for having us today. Thank you, my brother. Um, 25% of fans not happening today. How does that make you guys feel? Well, I think it's a very big blow for the club in terms of our revenue generation and then for morale boosting because the players are used to playing with supporters in the stadium and then for the first time they are playing in an empty stadium so that alone is also a big blow for us but going forward i think we've put in place a whole lot of measures in terms of psyching them up and then adopting other means of revenue to ensure that we have uh, the kind of uh, resources to be able to organize our home games mm -hmm. and then we are hoping that uh, interactions between the government and other uh, football related agencies would yield a very positive result and government receives that decision back mm. now uh, in the build-up to the game i'm sure you had printed some uh, tickets for the 25 percent fans that will be coming in here uh, what happens to that uh, incurred some lost well definitely we are going to incur cost for that because um tickets have already been issued and uh, we received that today. The FA went ahead to print the tickets. So um, right now, we don't know whether the association will make a decision on uh, sharing the cost of the ticket printing. But I know that definitely clubs are going to bear cost for, for ticket printing. Mm. Yeah. Well, regardless, uh, our football is still back to us. And we're going to be starting off with match day one. First game for your team at home. Um, as a club administrator, football is back. How, what do you make of that? Well, it's very exciting because for about six months or so, we've been training. Um, without playing any, any football. The players have been home, we've been paying them salaries and other, other stuff. So I think it's very positive that uh, for now uh, we are resuming to play football and then I think uh, for us we are also participating in Africa. Uh, this particular game serves as a very good opportunity for us to test the skills of our players and see how best uh, we are ready for the competition. So we are all excited uh, to welcome the football competition back. Fans will be watching you from home on Star Times. Any words for them? Well, I um, would thank them for the support they've given to us previously. Uh, though they can't be here, it's very unfortunate, but we are expecting that they will be keeping us in their prayers and they will be expecting that they will be supporting us from their various homes. And then we will hope to give out our best today to ensure that we put smiles on their faces. Yeah. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you, my brother. Yeah.
All right, all right. Just getting the vibe, the feel of the match, as we always, with the atmosphere. Uh, Obwas is not far from Kumasi, so I would imagine Fufu would not be spared this afternoon. Uh, by now, coach, um, what would the players be you know, going through? They've eaten hours ago. What do you do now? Tactics have been given out. You know the role to play. What do you do? Just relax? Yeah, you just relax and, you know, uh, you start to visualize mm. what you expect on the pitch. You play the match in your head. In your head, because you have an appointment with your coach. Right. And the appointment, you start to think about it. How am I going to execute my appointment and do it properly? Mm. Because sometimes you go into the pitch and things are different. So how do you adjust to it? Mm. These are the things that will keep rolling your mind. But then you don't need to overborder yourself because you don't know what is going to happen next. Mm. Some, just wait. Some, some nervousness, tension. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Nervousness, tension is part of the game. But it's just about how you deal with the situation. Right. Ash Gold arriving, you know, and uh, Coach was <laughs> mentioning, uh, Coach Ibn was talking about some of their new players. Yeah. It, it's, 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 um, you need to conserve energy before you explode, right? How do you do that? Energy conservation. How it's, is it's it done? Not, it's not, you know, mentally. You can, you know, use more energy mentally than even physically. You think too much of that, about the game, you get fatigued even before you start the game. Right. For which reason, sometimes coaches will ask you listen to, to music, listen to music blank, blank out. That's right. And sometimes you keep teasing each other in the dressing room and, you know, right. just take your mind a little bit off the game mm. for some time. Then you think about the game proper when it is, the time is due. Right. You see, this is also another good time. <laughs> to unwind. That's right, absolutely. Yeah. Let's take a look at Carella, obviously. Um, would, would it be fair to say they're the underdogs, is, uh, Coach Eben? No, I won't say the underdogs. They went there to beat Ashanti Gold, <laughs> just with uh, the NC competition, yeah. by a long goal. Mm. And Ash Gold uh, uh, have lost some key players. But in terms of... So have Carella. In, in terms of preparation-wise, I would say Carella have done so well because they went to Pram Pram to start camping. You know, Ivan Sadote is the assistant coach to Karim Zito in the U20 camp. So they went there and they were there camping mm -hmm. and played series of friendly matches. Mm -hmm. And their last friendly match was against Mediaman, which they won by two goals to zero. Mm -hmm. Goals came from Diawusi Taylor. So mm -hmm. going to Abuase is not a new um, place for them. But these players are matured. And for me, I believe, see them. You <laughs> know, the, 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 the battle of the buses. Now, <laughs> Kumase Asantu Kotoko, um, Legon Cities and Karela, the three of them are battling. Uh, with, with regards to branding, I think they wouldn't want this Liverpool. I mean, we know Liverpool <laughs> is a great team, but next time they should make sure they don't have the a foreign team. Yeah, yeah, come on, that's something that they should watch out for. But anyway, that's just by the way. Um, they, they look poised, but you can't really tell just by them coming down from the bus. Yeah, the point is the players are excited, and that is what I, I always like to see from my players. Yeah. They are much ready. Mm -hmm. You could see from what they were doing, Ashanti Gold and then and Karela players. They are so excited, but I believe they are, they are fully concentrated mm. on the game. Ash Gold is going to this game with a 4 2 3 1. As, as same as Karela 4 2 3 1. At the end of the day, it's going to depend on who the, the team that is going to control the Milford. Ash Gold is going to have um, Apia Makati and the younger brother of Joseph Esau. Yeah. He's called Eric Esau. Eric, and right. of course, David Abangina. Mm. And then when you talk of Karela, they have two players in Milford, Sadiq Alassa, and of course, Omar Bashir in Milford. Yeah. So these are guys that are going to battle in Milford. Of course, Ice Gold do, does very well when they do the ring play, because Amos are there is very, is very quick. Yeah, no, it's very quick. But at the end of the day, Hans Kofi has won the goal king with Ashanti Gold before. So how is he coming back into the new season with Ashanti Gold? How is he going to prove? Diawusi Taylor was on the edge of joining Kumasi and Kotoko the last season, and it didn't happen. He went back to Karela. So he's in there to prove to everybody that, look, I'm still Diawusi Taylor that Kotoko were after. I'm Diawusi that I qualified to play the local blasters. I'm Diawusi that people should rely on me. Is Sika Akuno watching? These are the things that is going through this place. I definitely <coughs> wish to enjoy this particular game. And I know the two coaches, you talk of Ivan Sadote, he's got an experience ahead of, I mean, Thomas Dua, you know, Thomas Dua, the former Blaster player. This is his The, younger, the uh, elder brother of uh, um, Imano, Imano Dua. Dua. Yeah, of course, he's, 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 he's in charge of Ashanti Gold. He's there as former an assistant. Former player as well, right? Yes, right. a former player. He's there as an assistant coach. But at the end of the day, these two coaches, you talk of experience in the Ghana Premier League, of course, you give it to Ivan Sadoti. But this is football. And when you talk of the Ashanti Gold back four, apart from Bashiru, Abdul Bashiru from Dreams FC. Yeah, if Roland is going to play, meaning that the back five, 
Robert Dabu from Wow All Stars, I think for the last six years he's been with Ashanti Gold. Yeah. And if he's going to be in post, meaning that the back four of Ashanti Gold has been there for the last two years. Yeah. So consistency is going to help them. David Abagna was there just last season. Apia Makati has been there for the last three and a half season. So it tells you that from their goalkeeper to, to, to defense and Milford, they have consistency in the team. So obviously they are going to have the understanding, the telepathy and the, everything in the game. But everything is going to depend on the players in terms of transition in this particular game. I foresee a very good game coming up. No doubt about that. We foresee a good game. And I'm sure you at home as well. I'm sure you're predicting. It is on channel 247 on the Star Times, Adipa TV and also live on the Max TV. It's a good match to look forward to. Ashanti Gold versus Karela. We're not too sure how they're going to fare, but yesterday gave us an indication of how teams might perform during this COVID period. Why don't we hear from the coaches now? Coach Milivan, welcome to Ghana. Thank you. You've been uh, with your team for just seven days uh, of training. Um, how prepared are you with the boys? We try preparing well for the first game. You know, first game always is most difficult game. I know it will be very difficult for us, but I hope we respect other team, but I believe my team and we will do everything for, for win. Mm. You selected four debutants in the team today against your opponents. How much do you know about your opponents and how does that, did that cons conf uh, affect your, your, your selection? I saw, I saw them on some friendly games and on the training. Mm. And I spoke with the assistant coach like that with somebody from club. And what I see, I chose players for. What sort of a game should we expect from you and your, your, your team today? I told you, I expect a good result. A win or a draw? But for me, it's better win. All right, all the best. Coach, finally our football is back. How does that make you feel? Yeah, thanks for the privilege. Uh, we all agree that there is post fraternity. I mean, in, gen in general, especially for coaches like me and players, uh, we, we are so happy. Mm. Why? Because football is back. Mm. Now, uh, you're now in charge of Karela. Uh, they had a very tough time last season. You've been brought in to salvage the situation. How ready are you and the boys? I'm ever ready. And a good question put across. Uh, one area I want uh, the fans of Karela to understand is I'm not uh, here alone or I'm not with the club alone to salvage the image. Mm. But rather, I need the entire support. When I mean entire support, it is the, from the board management it comes down to the tec technical team, supporters, and the, and the media. Mm. All hands will have to be on deck, and mm. then together we can achieve our objective or aim. Mm. Have you had enough time in terms of preseason to get the team ready for this first game? Well, not really. Mm. Because uh, for the past two months, I was in camp with um, Black Satellite. Yeah. At the moment, I'm the assistant coach to uh, Abdul Karim Zito. So uh, I can't move on until maybe I'm permitted to go. Mm. So I was just released four days back to um, come and help my club. That is a daunting task and it comes with so much challenge. Honestly, days, honest, honestly speaking. Mm. Now, we've seen uh, the lineup today, six players making their debut for the team. Uh, big changes. How is that going to pan out on the, ga on, on the field? What sort of a game are we expecting? Oh, well, um, irrespective of the changes or the new players brought on, we are in for business. Business, I mean, we want to sell to the um, sports fraternity good football, discipline, discipline, when we're talking of tactical discipline, mm. I want my team to demonstrate, set and act. So by the close of today, you will see uh, a new transformed Karela, Karela side headed by coach Ivan Augustin Aruti. Should we be counting on the fact that no fans here will give you some advantage? Oh, no, 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 no not at all. I don't fear. I will even um, expect the fans are here in numbers. The, this place is my home. I was brought up here I played, I captained, I became a coach. They sponsored me as far as Manchester and I, I asked elsewhere. So Obwasi belongs to me. I'm happy to be here. I wish the fans are here in their numbers. So a win is guaranteed? Oh, yeah. I'm not here to, to lose. I'm here to take the three points or ensure a draw. Thank you very much. All the best. <laughs> I like that. What you wish for is what you get. Now, interesting. Contrast mm -hmm. the answers of the two coaches. <laughs> yes. One said that, you know, a, a win would be good. This one says he wants a win. Yes. So psychologically, 
you can tell tactically. Yeah. You can tell one is going for a win <laughs> and he's going to go and attack. And he makes an emphasis on the fact that this is where I'm from. I've played here, I've captained, I've coached, and I'm not settling for anything less. That's a powerful pre-match statement. Of course, Evans, 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 as I said, was uh, uh, he was with Ash Good Academy. He worked there with, with, with Yakente mm. for, for years. But he's saying he's, he's, he was in Pram Pram and all that. I know the team was in Pram Pram. I'm talking about Karela team was in Pram Pram, preparing over there. Yeah. Let's take a look at the lineup. And uh, uh, Coach Damba, yeah. is this, well, it's the, um, the squad. Is this what you're expecting? I mean, if you look at the setup there, not, any, not, anything unusual? No, 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 nothing unusual. It's just that I was thinking of uh, Robert Dabo in goal. But that notwithstanding, the back four, you can just very see very clearly, as uh, my counterpart here indicated, they do have stability and consistency in there, especially with the left back of Bashiro. Right. And a quick one from you, uh, Eben, on number 18. Quick quick comment. That's David, David Abagna. Abagna. He, he's, a, he's a great muffler. He's a box-to-box -box muffler. You know, he was the top scorer for Wild All Stars, although he was a muffler. Mm. I mean, he, he never had enough opportunity in Ashanti Gold the last, that season. Yeah. But this time, because the, the, the exit of um, Alatif Anabila and then James Akamenko, he has got the opportunity to start the game. And I think that he's really going to give account of whatever we know of him. Okay, Yafufro is there. Um, Sadiq Al Hassan, mm -hmm. uh, Umar Basiri, Richard Berkon. Do you see? You mentioned him. Idrisu Shaibu, Godfrey Ajiman, he's captain for today. Kujo Adai. Um, Kamadini Mahmoudou, we, yeah. not much known about him, but you guys could tell us. Obed Sam, as well as Safo Evans. And then on a bench, I guess uh, they will be hoping to come on to make a change when called upon. Of course, this Kamadini boy is the young guy that I was talking about. And then they have this Obed Sam. He's also from the, he's some of the uh, smaller teams over there. You know, Karela is one particular team. They normally get even players from Cote d'Ivoire mm. to join them. Even Sadoti knows what he's about. I mean, he's good. He's starting with Omar Bashiru and then Sadiq Alasa over there in Mefford. And that is exactly what he intends doing. He knows he can contain Ashanti Gold. But Ashanti Gold is playing with two strikers, Hans Kofi and then Mark Ajakum. Yeah. So it tells you that Ash Gold is going in the 4 1 3 2 system. Yeah. And then Akoto is starting ahead of Atakusi. Akoto is the former captain of Heart of Lions. That is Frank Akoto. He used to play for the U23 that just went to um, Egypt. It's a very good side. Abdul Bashir is also starting. And for me, I think that Ashanti Good is going into this game very cautiously. Yeah, yesterday we had a debate about the official social media was agog with a lot of talk. Today we're hoping that uh, <laughs> referee Gabriel Ahin will be supported very well by his first assistant, his second assistant, and a fourth official, Mohamed Misba, Mumuni Fuseni, and Patrick Papala. We're hoping for a good game from there. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. I was disappointed in the referee yesterday, in as much as uh, out of the 90 minutes, there were some serious and then important decisions that he took that didn't go well um, in behalf of um, Legon Cities. And at the point, at the end of the game, you saw an official of Legon City trying to attack the referee. And I think that the authorities will have to deal with that. Absolutely. And for me, I believe that as we go forward, the, the FA has been able to provide whatever the referees need or the officials need to help them. So at least they should be able to come out clean for us to trust them. And then we shouldn't go back to their normal But, but yeah, you know, the referee is also Very briefly, yeah. instituting something. Mm. That poor performance of referees will lead to demotions. That's good. And I think that is what they should emphasize on. Awesome. Because yesterday's performance was below. Was below par. So he'll, he'll not get the 10 out of 10 or 8 or 7. I'm sure if it's 5 or 6, that's just not good enough. We're just minutes away from kickoff in Obuasi. Um It's going to be a good match, we hope. Yesterday, we started with two goals from the penalty spot. Today, we're hoping for open play goals. And from what our two coaches are telling us, Karela and Ashgold should provide that with some very exciting players. Some new boys also being injected by both sides should provide that entertainment and question mark factor. What about you at home? Have you made your predictions? Have you uh, put down something in terms of what you're expecting? Remember, this match is live on Star Times channel 247, that is Adipa TV. If you haven't yet got your decoder, this is as good a time as to get one. Why? Because after this game, Kumase Asante Kotoko. All the hype, all the noise, all the pomp and pageantry this evening, they would have to show that it's not just about talk when they take on the Wonder Team. Not a cry great Olympics, but another 11 Wonders. That's at 6 o'clock. It will be right here. But for now, on Max TV and, and Adipa, we're getting ready for um, Ashgold versus Karela. Very briefly, gentlemen, your final words and predictions. Well, I'm thinking <laughs> that it's going to be um, a close battle. Mm. But 
in the first half, I don't expect to see goals because they are going to be very cautious with each other. And the second half is when they're going to open up. Hmm. Which is yeah. very cautious, huh? Based on the sharpness of Diawusi Taylor and the likes of Hans Kofi in the team, I'm expecting goals, either one or two, in the first half of the, this particular game. Okay. Interesting indeed. And the weather, we've been told, is quite good. Um, it's quite sunny. You know, it's, we're not expecting any rain. Moderate winds. Quickly again, how does that also affect uh, if just before the game it starts to rain? It's very windy. Does a coach have to be forced to make changes or you stick to the plan that you went in with? You know, you, you always have your plan, your plan B. All right. So when it starts to rain, you're supposed to prepare. Awesome. Yes, you're supposed that to That is a view that Oboise and when we come a little lower, we will see that we're getting ready for the venue. Let's link over to Sicho Astrim Philip and Nana Jesse Dakwa for the match. Welcome to the Obwasule Clay Sports Stadium. It's match day one of the Ghana Premier League. Live from the mining city of Obwasule, we bring to you this game live on Star Times at the Part TV. Channel 247 and Max TV is Obwasi Ashanti Gold and Karela FC here at the Lenclair Sports Stadium. It's been months and days and weeks of waiting for the return of football. But finally, football returned to Ghana yesterday as the Gun City's locked downs with Brecum Chelsea and they got locked up in a draw at the Accra Sports Stadium yesterday. Hopefully, Lenclair will be producing some goals in this game between the minors and the pride and passion from Anunasi in the western region of Ghana. My name is Nana Dakwa Jesse. I welcome you to the Lincoln Sports Stadium together with my co-commentator, Astrid Sichope Philip, the reigning best sports show host in Ghana. Good afternoon, Sicho. Good afternoon, Nana. We've been waiting for this and here it is. The moment all of us have been waiting for, all Ghanaians have been looking forward to this, the return of the Ghana Premier League. The return of the Ghana Premier League. This is our own, this is Ghana's flagship football competition and there you see the miners emerging out of the tunnel in their usual gold and black strips with Karela FC spotting red and green as they march onto the field as we bring you the second game on coverage on Star Times at the Channel 247 and Max TV. It's match day one of the much anticipated Ghana Premier League 2020-2021 season but this season it's kind of going to be awkward because we're going to have fans at the stadium. They add up to the vibe. They add up to the excitement. It's going to be some kind of a season for us. Yeah, for most places or most parts of the world, fans are not in the stadium. So we have to do with that. It's because of the protocols that governments are putting in place to make sure that lives are safe. I'm sure that the players will adapt to it. It's only a matter of time before they get used to the fact that fans can be at the stadium. So if you just tuned in, this is start times at the Pat Channel 247, your partners for the coverage of the 2020-2021 Ghana Premier League season. We are in Obwase, the mining town of the Ashanti region, and we are bringing to you the game between Obwase Ashanti Go, the home side, and then Karela FC. There you see Karela changing their strip, they are leaving out their jackets and moving on to their jerseys. So that's the lineup of the miners. They are parading an unfamiliar team from the team that we've seen in the last couple of seasons. A lot of players have exited the minors, and this man in your shot is the new captain of the side, Hans Kofi. He makes a return to Ashanti Gold, having excelled, played brilliantly for Hearts of Lions, Bediama Sporting Club, Ashanti Gold. He finally makes a return to the minors. He's a familiar face, isn't he? And he, he's got experience in his legs. I mean, it's been a very you know, tricky summer or transfer time for Ashgood because some of the players that the fans have come to love are not there. So this is the lineup for Ashanti Gold. They have the Burkina Bay goalkeeper Mohamed Beilu, Ibrahim Samet, Richard Osajiman, Apewa Siedu, Abdul Bashiru, Frank Akoto, Makati Apia, David Abagna, Hans Kofi, Amos Nkrumah, and then Mark Ejekum. This is a Serbian coach of the minors, Milovan Chekovic. In the course of the game, I'm going to tell you something very exciting about this man. Mm. He has a lot of knowledge about Ghana football. You know why? He was assistant to Milovan Rajevat, former Black Stars coach, when they were together at the Thailand national team. So he knows some stuff about Ghana football. Here is the 
Karela lineup. Yao Ansafufro is on loan from Mediama Sporting Club. The Shaibu Idrisu, Kamara Dini Mamudu, Kojo Adai, Goffred Yabu Ajiman, Sadiq Uma, Ivan Safo, Obed Kofisam, Diawisi Taylor, and Richard Berko. This is Ivan's Adote. So much experience joining from Mediama. Yeah. I want to take a look at the way the teams have lined up there. This man looks like a 4 4 2 system for Ashgold with Hans Kofi leading the line. So perhaps Maka Jakun providing support for Karela. They are approaching the game with numbers in midfield where Ivan Safu, Obed Kofi Sam, and Umar Bashir will be hoping to keep an eye on you know, Abagna and Apia Makati. Our center man for today is Gabriel Ahin. And guess what? The center referee is a journalist and he works with a radio station called 123 FM and he's coming from Wenchi to officiate this game, assisted on the lines by Patrick Papala. He's a student teacher at the University of Education in Winneba, and there's Mohamed Fuseni as the assistant too. Our fourth referee is Mohamed Mizbao, and the match commissioner is a former chairman of the Brokenhafu Regional Football Association, Augustin Asante. All is set, the battle lines are drawn, but there will be one minute of silence for the departed former head of state and president of the republic of ghana his excellency flight lieutenant jerry john rollins whose sad demise hit ghanaians on thursday so before kickoff we are certainly going to have a one minute silence for papa jay as we all come to know him yeah and rightly so a very strong figure not just in ghana but across the continent and the world as, as well and so he deserves this in memory of him he will never be forgotten. Jerry Rollins was the last president to help Ghana to an African Cup of Nations title in 1982. Jerry Rollins was president of Ghana when Ghana won bronze as the first African country to win a medal at the Olympics. 